Well, good evening. Good evening and welcome to the Marcus Today Ask the Analyst session for this Friday, the 5th of April. And as usual, with all the information contained in this session, it is general advice only. So please do your own research. Contact your own financial advisor regarding any of the thoughts, ideas or insights in this session. All right. Well, hopefully everyone can uh, hear me and see me in terms of the uh, the visuals and the audio. Uh, we'll just kick things along in terms of uh, just that disclaimer, of course, uh, as usual. And we'll get straight into any questions that you guys have. Uh, that is uh, that is what we're here for after all. First of all, I guess we'll just let uh, uh, a little bit of uh, a kickoff in terms of where the market is, because it has been uh, somewhat of a dodgy old week this week, one and a half percent down uh, for the week. And you can see here, obviously, uh, the market has been struggling, uh, to say the least. Let's just get this up with, uh, uh, there we go, just breaking through that 20-day moving average as well in terms of the uh, the market. So uh, that is uh, looking a little bit wobbly. Of course, tonight we do have that non-farm payrolls number, and that is going to be the key, I guess, going forward. Um, so we'll see. Uh, some questions coming through. Thanks for all those questions. Um, let's uh, start with uh, Nick. I'd love to get your comments on Webit Nano. Webit Nano, well, the problem with Webit Nano is one, it's a technology company, and two, it is also a uh, company that doesn't have any revenue. And the problem that it has got at the moment is that it doesn't have any particular exciting announcements. Kobe Hanok did come over uh, a week or so ago and did uh, talk to retail investors, but there wasn't anything particularly new in that. And of course, when you've got a bit of a tech sell-off in the uh, the sector at the moment, uh, they are under some pressure. They did bounce a little bit today, but it was a little bit. You can see here that it has broken through the bottom of that range, uh, which was around uh, $3.40. We're back to sort of $3.20. I guess uh, $3 is a bit of support there as well, but it does need a little bit of good news. 2024 was always going to be a year uh, where we needed to see some revenue. Kobe, we did have on the couch uh, not so long ago in terms of uh, a bit of a chat that I had with him. And he was certainly uh, trying to urge caution, I guess, for investors to get too carried away with uh, revenue. It does take time and there has to be some patience, but it would not be nice to see some good news on the horizon. So anyway, um, at the moment, it looks, uh, looks a bit rubbishy, to say the least. Um, Tony, to everyone, Marcus Growth and Henry Small Caps have 40% cash. How do you invest that? Term deposits or bill ETF? Um, I don't, it, these are model portfolios, Tony. These are, these are not fantasy portfolios. These are model portfolios. It is not real money. So bear that in mind. So there is no real money uh, part of these portfolios. So bear that in mind. Uh, so there's no investing of uh, spare cash. Uh, certainly it is more signals than anything else. Uh, I have been asked about Aurelia Metals, and uh, they have been going uh, pretty well at the moment, I have to say. Uh, not one that I usually uh, look at, um, but uh, Aurelia Metals, $295 million dollar. Uh, market cap there. Um, they have just recently done a presentation to uh, Ord's small cap um, conference. Let's just have a little look and see if we can get that up. Um, they've got some bigger shareholders. Franklin Brazil, 19% uh, shareholder. Renaissance, 5.6% shareholder. Uh, gold and copper got cash. So that's always good for a gold company. And you can see, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, gold and copper very much in demand at the moment in terms of um, sexy sectors. Uh, Aurelia has got uh, established production base from Peak and Hera and Dargs and Federation and Great Comar to come. So it has probably got a little bit stretched at these levels, but it does have cash. Uh, so uh, it looks okay. Volumes not looking too bad either. Uh, we've had a big day today, up uh, nine odd percent today so a, a biggish day today from that one so uh, clearly some good news around uh, today we did see them uh, with uh, a federation exploration update which clearly has uh, kicked them higher 
uh, significant strike offset and depth extension potential identified at federation so some good news there kicking it higher so i'd stick with that one for the time being all right well let's look with uh through south 32 uh hello daryl how are you mate good to talk to you um perseus i did actually write a um an article for nab trade on some of the gold stocks perseus does look quite cheap um, I guess there's a certain amount of discount involved because it's in West Africa. Uh, and it has got a little bit of geographical diversity in West Africa as well. I think it's pushing into Ethiopia or Sudan from memory. But there is an article I wrote for NAB Trade, uh, which uh, looked at Perseus. So that uh, may be worth having a little look at, Daryl. But it certainly does look cheap compared to some of its peers. South 32. Well, it was down and out in Beverly Hills, wasn't it? It was looking pretty shocking. Uh, it has recovered. Uh, obviously, there's been a bit of recovery in some of the commodity stocks and commodity prices generally, coal stocks as well. So it has been doing better. There were also stories uh, that hit had um, been doing, uh, they were looking at uh, a coal deal of, for South 32. So uh, there's some news around there Um I'm just trying to get the article up that I saw, um, but there was some uh, some news out um, that uh, South 32 were looking at uh, selling off part of their coal business. So a little bit of good news there. At the moment, I do suspect that um, resources are probably, I was going to say, a safer place to be than, uh, than some of the other sectors, but they certainly have lagged. Uh, at the moment, and we are seeing higher commodity prices across the board, I guess, with the exception of iron ore, but copper, gold, cocoa, coffee, um, I was going to say nickel, but that's not happening. Aluminium's doing well as well. Uranium's not doing too badly. Lithium not doing an awful lot. So we are seeing a lot more interest in some of these resource plays. Uh, South 32 is one of those. Catman do. Well, Catman don't, uh, I guess, is the answer there in that one. Um, it has been struggling. I guess to some extent it's a weather related uh, and it's a weather affected stock. Uh, it is puffer jackets and rip curl to some extent. Not a massive fan of uh, Kathmandu, I must admit, Daryl. It's not really on my radar at the moment. Um, it's certainly not um, really piquing my interest. They did have a bit of a downgrade cycle. And they are having issues, of course, with the weather. It would be nice if we had a cold snap in uh, on the East Coast and we everyone went to the puffer jackets. But how many puffer jackets can a man buy? And, of course, they did do quite well through COVID with everyone buying wetsuits as they went surfing. But they're now probably in the cupboard now getting a bit mouldy. So uh, not really a big fan of Kathmandu. Uh, Tony's to everyone. What are your small cap? Watch this for when the blood runs in the streets. Well, one, I'm not really expecting the blood to run in the streets. I'm expecting more of a sideways kind of consolidation uh, in the market. I was my fat and happy theory at Easter uh, has played out quite well. We did reach uh, an all time high on uh, the day before Good Friday. And since then, we're now down one and a half percent. So uh, that is something I've got right, which is good to know. Um, but my I guess uh, really, I mean, we're looking at the US and continuing to look at the US. In terms of rate cuts, it just seems to be a continual story there, which is somewhat uh, dull at the end of the day. It's, um, I mean, I don't know quite how many ways you can say we are in no hurry. The U.S. economy is strong and therefore we don't feel we need to cut rates just yet. There will be rate cuts, but we are in no hurry and we are data dependent. I don't know how many times and how many ways you can say that. They certainly have got enough Fed heads out there saying it in different ways. It shouldn't have come as much of a surprise last night that Neil Kashkari uh, talked about potentially no rate cuts this year. That was potential, depending on the data. Neil, unfortunately, is not a voting member of the, uh, the committee, so it really doesn't matter what he thinks, apart from in the press. But it will hinge, I guess, on the, the, the data that continues to come out. And most of it is relatively strong. And the US economy is going pretty well. Uh, and we are seeing commodity prices picking up, especially... Worryingly, I guess, for the oil prices, although I did look at uh, the price of petrol in the US and it's not really doing an awful lot. Still uh, in Aussie dollar terms, around $1.43 a litre. So not exactly uh, uh, going through the roof anyway. So 
I'm not expecting blood in the streets. There is uh, a few small caps that I'm always looking at. Most of the ones that I've got, but uh, at the moment, I'm quite happy with where I am. Um, Greg, to everyone, please comment on your copper plays, uh, Xanadu and Carnaby. Uh, well, Xanadu is, um, I've talked about that one a little, probably a bit ad, ad nauseum in the newsletter. Uh, this is uh, the play in Mongolia. Uh, it's in the same region as Oyo Tolgoi, which is uh, the Rio massive uh, copper mine up there, which they've been wrangling around for ages. I did post a link on Facebook of uh, a guy, I think it was from CNN, who went inside that mine. It's massive, absolutely massive. So it's worth searching out that if you get a chance. Uh, Xanadu, I was hoping to get uh, the CEO of Xanadu, Colin Moorhead, on the couch next week. But unfortunately, he's not going to be around. He's going overseas. So I'm not scheduled now to catch up with him. But I do like Xanadu. Uh, the grade is not great. Uh, but it has got good Chinese backing. Uh, the project is 50% owned uh, by the Chinese. So I do like uh, Xanadu. They need to do some more exploration. The, the actual resource is quite high grade in places and it's quite near the surface. Uh, so that is good. Neurology playing out into this one. And it's not the most massive of market caps in terms of, um, of how big it is. So you do get a lot of leverage. And as I say, although you know these copper projects take a long time to come on board, um, to some extent, it has got the uh, the benefit of Xi Jinping, uh, that is the major backer there. One hundred and seventeen million dollar market cap. Carnaby um, is another one that we have looked at, not quite as recently, uh, but that one again. I guess the problem for the market is that it's very hard at the moment to find uh, pure copper stocks and stocks in the copper space that are um, a sufficient quality. And uh, and size as well uh, to really get involved in the uh, the demise, if you like, of um, Oz Minerals uh, left a bit of a gaping hole in the market. Samphire, to some extent, has filled that hole. Uh, Carnaby Resources is only a hundred million dollar uh, market cap company, so um, that one there is uh, looking for gold, lithium, and copper. Uh, flagship project there is. Of course, um, the Greater Duchess Copper Gold Project up at Mount Isa. Again, good territory to be in. Uh, so I don't dislike Carnaby. But obviously, when you get down days like today and resources under a little bit of pressure, uh, that does have a little bit of a problem. Uh, Peter asks your view on A1M and MLX. A1M, I think. Uh, let's just have a little look. I haven't looked at them for a while. Um AIC mines. We did actually go through this one, I think, on the call on Ausbiz a little while ago, a couple of weeks ago, uh, with Andrew. And we we both liked this one. I have to say, um, you know, again, it comes down to resources at the moment seem to be uh, in demand to some extent, and uh, we have seen uh, a little bit of a renaissance, especially with copper where it is at the moment. This one is a 173 million dollar market cap uh, they have just increased the resource at jericho uh, which is good news there so um yeah it's um let's just uh, get that announcement up if i can whack it across i can't it doesn't seem to want to play ball um but um jericho reserves uh increased significantly following incorporation results from the 2023 drilling program and updated mine designs i guess one of the problems that we've got at the moment um, and I was talking to um, one of the, uh, well, the CEO and MD of Alligator Energy up in Northern Territory, and uh, they were talking about uh, some of the weather. And the weather hasn't been great up in the north half of Australia. A lot of rain. We've seen that with 2-9 metals and Capricorn uh, there being a problem. We've also seen it with Gold Road. So these guys have got the uh, near the, the uh, Eloise copper mine. Again, it's copper. Uh, and copper is is flying at the moment. It does seem as if the market, which weirdly for a long time was talking about the the de the looming deficit for copper, no one seemed to really do much about it. And there has been some production problems. <laughs> excuse me, production problems coming out of Chile. Although uh, that production from Chile, which is the world's biggest producer of copper, has kicked back in in February. It was up seven point seven percent. 
coming off a few months of uh, underwhelming production. So maybe we'll see a little bit of cooling in the copper market, but at the moment it seems to be quite hot. So AIC probably continuing uh, to look okay. I'm not sure how much cash they have. That's always an issue. Uh, Metals X as well. Let's have a little look at that one. <laughs> Again, you know, the same applies uh, with uh, with Metal X. Some of these second line ones, uh, you know, we are having, um, to some extent, a bit of a resource boom. I know it doesn't show up in the likes of BHP, Rio and Fortescue because we're not having an iron ore boom, but we are having a little bit of a resource boom. It's probably... Uh, not something to um, to shout about, but certainly I've heard anecdotally that the um, the companies servicing the resource sector are doing pretty well. Uh, those uh, mining services companies doing well. Metals X as well. You know they've got the Renison tin mine in Tasmania. Tin has been on a bit of a uh, a bit of a, a a push, and there was an interesting article on tin. Tin, of course, replaced lead in solder, so it is very important in the tech. Uh, boom, very important in AI that you're able to connect uh, your um, your $100,000 chips, I guess, to the rest of your circuit boards, and that requires tin. So there is a bit of a, a tin story, and obviously Metal X picking up on that one. So again, uh, that looks okay for the time being. Um, and that doesn't seem to continue. Um, Zip, Dave Bramley asks about Zip. Well, <coughs> excuse me, Zip, let's face it, um, I did uh, I did pick Zip uh, back at the beginning of December for my Ausbiz Christmas Advent calendar pick for 2024. They were 38 cents at the time. Uh, my target price was a dollar. They went screaming past that because that's what things tend to do. And they hit a dollar fifty, dollar sixty nearly. I think um, it has come back to a dollar twenty five. You know, I think there's another update at the end of April. The next update from memory was April the 24th, I think. I'll have to check that. Um, as far as buyback in price, uh, well, my my target was a dollar. Uh, it got to be a sort of a $1.4 billion company again. So I'm not sure things were that good. Um, so I would have been happy to take profits anywhere from a dollar uh, certainly at a dollar sixty, that would have been a big profit-taking signal. Um, but um, maybe uh, back down towards ninety cents, I'd look to uh, to buy back in. Um, uh, Paul Crossing, I only just joined MT, so missed your reasoning on the great call on Zip a few months ago. Sorry for that. Well, Paul, uh, the idea behind Zip, and this came on the back of the uh, the Cyber Monday, the Black Friday, all those sorts of sales that were happening in the US. And we did get some numbers out of Klarna and a firm as well. And it did show that the U.S. consumer was alive and kicking. And it wasn't so much that they'd stopped spending. And they just changed the way they had been um, paying for things. And Zip, of course, part of that with Quad Pay in the U.S. So that was, uh, for me, was a bit of a signal. Uh, I did interview the company uh, a little while ago. I talked to, uh, to Peter Gray. And also, the other thing that I looked at that I was quite impressed with was the way the company had focused its attention on Australia and New Zealand, which is their core business, I guess, and had been pushing into the US and various other places, but were pulling back and getting rid of all those other businesses. Focus on the US and Australia and New Zealand, to me, were good. And the other thing that I really liked about Zip at the time was the fact that the bad debts were well and truly under control. So that uh, those missed payments, et cetera, those bad debts, uh, were under control. So I liked it as a retail play in the financial landscape, but it did get a bit carried away. Um, Steve. Hi, Steve. How are you, mate? What are your thoughts on FDV, the economic condition, inflation, the monetarization, the monetarization trajectory in emerging markets? Well, FT, uh, Frontier Digital is uh, basically, um, they're basically taking pretty well-known concepts in terms of um <laughs> Our own uh, market here with things like REA and car sales and those sorts of businesses and transferring them to third, oh, no, maybe not third world countries, second world countries, the likes of Pakistan and South America. Um, I, I like it. The problem they have, of course, is that um, they need um, independent valuations and liquidity events sometimes to crystallize uh, that. Um, but it's it's not a bad business. And certainly, you know, the, the share price has 
um, poked its head up a little bit, um, although um, it is still uh, languishing to say the least. I'd stick with it, Steve. I have to say we've we've discussed this one before, um, but it does. You know, we've got um, we did have a little bit of uh, boardroom uh, resignations of the company secretary. Not that worries too much, but it has been doing okay in the last few months. So I would stick with that one. I have to say. Um, what would you, what, oh, Caroline, Caroline, what level would you look to take profits in car, please? Um, I got greedy in this one, Caroline. I, I'd really like um, Karoon. I have done for a long, long time. I got greedy in this one and was hoping uh, to get three bucks. It got to you know, $2.80 in a, in a bit of a, a fit. Um, and I should have sold it and didn't. And then, of course, they have had um, some issues. With production they've also expanded and diversified which i think is really good into hudat uh in uh the gulf of mexico which gives them another leg to their or another string to their bow right i don't want to mix metaphors um but that certainly helps diversify because they only really had their brazilian exposure i gotta say i am considering taking some profits around these kind of like 230 to 240 i think is maybe my taking profits level carolyn um i have to say what are your thoughts on 4dx 4dx uh the next generation of lung imaging um well yeah they they yeah they have uh, they have their moments let's face it they have their moments good announcements uh they're doing a lot of work with uh us uh vets war vets uh which has been good they have their moments they have good announcements they they go through the roof um excuse me then they sink back down again so um it's a i guess it's a question of timing maybe just sell into the the proper proper announcements um so that is probably the way of things uh i guess you know the u.s budget is not going to be an easy place to be is it 32 trillion dollars of debt so just be a little bit careful of that but politics in a political year um it could be that looking after war vets is a good thing uh, we could could do with some announcements though on 4DX. ATP, I'm not sure if that's the Australian Tennis Pro Tour um, or Atlas Pearls. I have to say, I've never actually heard of Atlas Pearls. I certainly don't think it's a lobster trap. It's more like an oyster trap, I'd say, from uh, from your, <laughs> your question. Atlas Pearls. Um, its market cap is $62 million. Um, so it's not a tiddler by, well, not a real tiddler. Owns and operates silver and white pearl farms in Australia and Indonesia. I'm, I, I must admit, I don't know much about this one. So I think I'm going to pass. Um, I'm afraid ATP. Maybe I'll put that on my list to have a little look at. But um, looking at the chart, it's you know it's not bad volume i have to say i'm not just sure about the pearl market i'm not sure how i i get any information on that alan asked i know you like karoon but what do you think of beach um well beach um i don't like beach i've got to say um they kind of screwed up my uh love for them they have uh, been pushing higher obviously on the back of the oil price as has everything with the exception of woodside which has been a absolute canine and they're now shareholder activists and uh, proxy advisors uh, trying to get uh, Woodside, um, <laughs> well, not in trouble, but um, you know, activating against them on the back of climate change, etc. It's an oil and gas company, guys. That's what they do, oil and gas. Um, I have to say, Woodside does look like it needs a right kick in the pants to push higher. Beach Petroleum, well, they're, they're sacking 30% of their staff. That's always great for morale um i don't like beach kerry stokes does obviously uh, they lost me some time ago when uh they had that reserve statement uh that really kicked them in the pants and uh, uh they started um sort of going sideways to down it's the, the only good thing about it is the oil price and there aren't that many sort of um mid-tier oil stocks that's why i guess karoon falls into that basket uh bill campbell asked about dreadnought dreadnought yeah exactly how long do you keep it in the bottom drawer well i think um yep 
at the moment dreadnought's not looking too flash i have to say it has been flatlining um for some time um let's just get up and see what the latest announcement was from dreadnought uh we have uh <coughs> excuse me um Geophysical res results from uh, Yampi, copper, silver, cobalt. Um, it's um, it's going to be a while, I think, is the answer. <laughs> Excuse me, let's get some water. Hang on. Very dry in the office this afternoon. Um, the um, $66 million market cap, I'm not sure if it needs a uh, one of those AED devices attached to it, but certainly... Um, doesn't seem as if it's going anywhere in a hurry. Um, <clears throat> can we talk on MAID, M-A-D, and what's behind the recent share price pullback? I seem to remember they had a bit of a, a profit downgrade, didn't they? Um, from memory, I guess they're going sideways, and that's not a great sign. Um, but uh, from memory, I'm just seeing if I'm right, uh, they did have a little bit of a downgrade with the results uh, came out in February, um, which was um, a little bit disappointing, I think, from memory. Um, and that, I guess, has been the reason for the pullback. I have seen broker downgrades as well. So, uh, Greg, that's obviously the reason there for that one. Um, leading provider of specialist technical services, multiple industries, et cetera, et cetera. But I do seem to remember... The results were a little underwhelming, and that is the reason for uh, that slip sliding away. At the moment, people are only going for good stories. Um, thoughts on Copper Run? Is it real? Um, <coughs> well, it appears to be real, I have to say. Um, certainly, the price of Copper appears to be real. Uh, hot Chili, uh, yes, uh, that was one that I previously held for a long time. Didn't do anything. Starting to show signs. Again, you know, it's it's really... At the moment, we are having a resource boom. I know it doesn't feel like it when you look at the biggies, and the biggies are too big, but when you look at some of the others um, in the sector, things are going a lot better uh, than they have done for a little while. Gold at $3,500 Aussie. Now, the gold sector should be getting a bit frothy. Um, we have had a recent uh, investor presentation from, uh, from Hot Chili, one of the top 10 underdeveloped uh, copper resources, 798 million tonnes grading 0.45 uh, copper equivalent, which is not bad. Um, that is certainly better than something like Xanadu in Mongolia, which I think is about 0.3% uh, percent copper. Um, next growth phase and upscale strategy. And certainly, you know, it's heading in the right direction. Copper for, for many a long time was uh, talked about uh, as the, as the metal to watch and it did absolutely nothing and now we are starting to see it starting to fire um so um yes hot chili doesn't look too bad um when are you going to head up to noosa and to have a meet and greet like sydney and perth uh rod that is a bloody good idea mate that is a bloody good i should come up you now i should do i should come up to noosa and go to the uh the chartists uh because i'm such a great chartist um, go to the Chartist um, Forum and the big uh, conference they have uh, with uh, Nick Raj. He's a lovely guy, I've got to say, a very smart guy as well. Um, so, um, yeah, maybe, maybe. I will see how Perth goes, but uh, Noosa is a lovely place. Um, so, yeah, I can always do with a holiday. Perth is is uh, really a, a trip because we're going to watch some whales or trying to find some blue whales in the Perth Canyon, uh, which my wife is very keen to see. So that was the reason for the Perth trip. And uh, we tacked on a little bit of uh, business on the end of it. Uh, the future of AB, APA. What is the future of APA? Well, it's, I mean, it's a utility. Um, it is a utility. So, um, you know, in that respect, uh, it's, um, it's going to be not very exciting. Um, it's also, um, it's also uh, the sorry, I just got to work out how to let my wife into the office. Um, it's also it has had some um, some uh, corporate activity, but it's a crucial strategic asset. So it's it's hard, I guess. It just bumps along function of interest rates to some extent. Uh, I wouldn't be concerned. It's not going bust. 
Um, but um, yeah, it's it's not going to be that exciting, is it? Let's face it. Linda asks about QBE. This is the stock that has surprised, <coughs> mainly because it's surprised because it hasn't surprised. QBE has a habit of surprising to the downside. Um, it's doing well. Um, the longer interest rates stay where they are, uh, the better. You've also got to remember that when we looked at the last lot of CPI, and you will know this, Linda, because I'm sure you've got insurance as I have, it has gone up a lot, an awful lot. I think in this last CPI, it was 8.1% financial services and insurance. So that is uh, something to bear in mind. So not a bad thing. I would probably, I don't know about take the profits and run, uh, I would probably take some money off the off the table, but if interest rates stay where they are, which it looks increasingly likely as they will for a little while, um, then it'll probably stay bubbling away. Um, at some stage, maybe the government will get interested in looking at the profits that um, resource companies make. But until then, uh, sorry, insurance companies make, but until then, it still looks pretty good. That chart looks pretty good, doesn't it? Well, I'm not chartist, but there you go. Um, Ray asked about thoughts on uh, Beach Petroleum. We've done that one. Any update on your views on Drone Shield? Well, not really. Uh, it was a bit of a bit of a nasty uh, move that the uh, the management sold down quite considerably um, when it got to ninety cents. Probably can't blame them. Everyone's entitled to diversify their portfolios, so that is something that um, obviously happened. But the unfortunate thing about Drone Shield is that the more we see um, violence attacks, we haven't seen any Houthi attacks for a little while. But the more we see problems in the Middle East and those drone attacks in, in Ukraine and Russia, the more in demand the uh, the technology from Drone Shield is likely to be. So um, that is something to bear in mind. Uh, they've bounced back from that uh, that sell-off after the directors sold, but um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a function really of uh, the nastiness that's going on in the world. Um, I'm gonna have to move a little bit quicker here, I have to say, because I'm, I'm rambling on. And I've got 38 questions there that I haven't actually uh, touched. Arrow Minerals. Um, yeah, Adam liked Arrow Minerals. Uh, he was a big fan of this one. <coughs> I'm actually trying to buy some PA at the moment. I'm in the screen, I think, at 0.04 uh, of a cent. So I um, don't know if I'll ever get them, but um, Adam Thor is very keen on that one. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, quite keen to uh, to buy those. He, uh, he laid out a pretty big strategy. Unfortunately, they do have about 14 billion shares on issue or something ridiculous. So they are a serial um, issuer of stock and they just did another issue. So there you go. Integrated research, not really doing much at the moment. Can't get excited. Um, Alan asks, hi, Alan Wu. Good to talk to you. Haven't had an email from you for some while. Hope you're well. Oil price has gone up a lot, but Woodside unformed its peers by quite a lot. Yeah, it has, hasn't it? It's somewhat worrying. Um, I've got to say, Woodside shareholders, of which BHP shareholders uh, would be some, would be pretty upset, I think. You know, you buy Woodside for a bit of oil and gas exposure. Well, you missed out on that one. I guess uh, part of the reason uh, for that is that it is very much a gas stock as opposed to an oil stock. Uh, but even Santos has gone well. I think if I was holding Woodside at the moment, Alan, I'd be a little bit peeved that it hasn't really performed. But equally, I would be um, holding it because I think at some stage it will perform. Um, so hang on to that one. Amcor, one of the bluest of blue chips, one of the most boring of stocks in the universe. Uh, did a company making uh, acquisition of Bemis. Um, we looked at this one on the call a few weeks ago. Couldn't get excited. Still can't get excited. Uh, the numbers coming out of Aurora when they took over uh, Saberglass, which is into uh, whiskey and uh, other packaging for those sorts of high end. Um, yes, Rod, it is water. It's not red wine. It should be red wine. You're right. Um, maybe even scotch. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I can't can't get excited about Amcor, I must admit. Um, how do you see markets tracking? Paul McKenzie, hi, Macca. Uh, assuming the only interest rate cut we get this year is September, how do you see the markets generally tracking between now and then? Up, down, sideways. Sideways, Paul, is my call. Is JMS in a sideways trend? Therefore, get out of the trade. JMS has been in a sideways trend forever. It is manganese coming out of Africa. Um, it is a high dividend paying stock, but it's almost like a capital return. The manganese price has been improving. 
um, but they still have yet to enunciate any kind of um, strategy to expand out of Shippy, which is their big project uh, for manganese. I find it very hard to get excited about it. Um, that was a trade that uh, Oliver instigated on the back of uh, a chart move. Um, yeah, we'll, um, we'll um, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just a sideways one. And it kind of, you know, it, it perked up as manganese perked up. It's probably um, going to consolidate around here. So we'll wait and see. But uh, it does, um, I don't know if there's any big panic to get out of it um at the moment but um certainly it's not the most exciting of stocks it does go sideways for a long time then sort of bobbles up uh, we get some numbers out of shippy and we get the dividend and then it bobbles back down again uh so anyway i wouldn't be panicking in it as far as lithium stocks go in particular uh, mineral resources uh, pilbara and latin resources um latin resources i talked about yesterday on osbiz still like that one uh still think there is uh, good scope there its neighbor, Sigma Lithium, has had a few issues. A few management changes as well. I noticed today there was a divorce involved there, which was kind of interesting. It's not something I had considered. But anyway, um, within the management. So, yeah, there was a Reuters report on that one. So that was interesting. Still like uh, Latin resources. I, you know, Pilbara confounds me. Um, that, that short position is extraordinary. It obviously has its moments. Um, I think you sell into those moments because the shorts are not going to go away. They have shown that they are made of stern stuff. So, um, you know, when it goes for its run and it will do again, then you sell into it. Uh, mineral resources, I guess, you know, it's got iron ore, it's got lithium. At least it's come off the lows. I think I'd be tempted to be taking some profits in mineral resources. Uh, Steve Bailey. Hi, Steve. Again, thoughts on aristocrat? Um, aristocrat... Well, apart from the ethics surrounding poking machines, which I'm not a big fan of, um, noticed it fallen pretty hard. Stock box numbers look um, pretty good. It has fallen pretty hard. They have had some issues with some of their IP. And of course, the light and wonder people um, are ex-aristocrat and are kind of taking it to them. So um, the competition that wasn't there is now there and they've bred it in-house. So um, um, just be a little bit careful about aristocrat um but you know it's getting down 4150 it's come back from 47 bucks i'd be looking at that one steve that would be on my shopping list uh but maybe not just yet maybe around 40 dollars for that one i've got 41 messages here how are we going um i might have to skip a few uh anthony asks your thoughts on gold road uh obviously they've got some issues with gruyere uh with their 50 percent uh, ownership of that one Weather has not been kind. However, uh, with resource stocks, despite the weather, as long as the um, infrastructure isn't damaged, the, the resource is still there in the ground. It's more a timing issue. Um, I don't mind Gold Road. Um, I don't mind it at all. I have to say, I still like the gold story. So uh, keep on keeping on uh, with that one. GD, uh, where is it? GDC. Um, Global data centers. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Everyone loves data centers. I love this one. Well, I don't love it. I like it. I know my mate Jonathan um, down at uh, uh, LC Capital. I uh, can't remember the name of them, but Jonathan Higgins, uh, my analyst friend who does this sector, he likes this one. Um, no reason not to, uh, I have to say. It quietly pushes up. Not great volumes, though, so just be a little bit careful. Um, ATP has been covered on Osbiz, if I remember correctly. It was liked. Well, Osbiz uh, on the call, let's face it, some of them are not great. And uh, some of them don't know what they're talking about, um, I have to say. Um, so it depends who was analysing it. If it was um, Howard, wouldn't certainly <laughs> would have freaked Howard out for a, a pearl company in Indonesia. Um, that would certainly not be satisfying any of their filters at Team Invest. I'm sure he would tell you a cricket anecdote instead. Um, I Victus Energy, uh, well, it did show signs. It's going to be a long road. The company does nothing to ingratiate itself with the investing public. They make the story harder than it appears. I have a, a gentleman that emails me a lot about the technical side of it. It is going to be a long-term thing. I'm not sure if I've got the patience. I was going to turf it out the other day uh, when it popped up to um, nine and a bit only because um, I have a sort of a 25 stop limit on the small cap portfolio and that was taking up space, um, but it's dropped back again. So I'll wait until it pops up and then maybe liberated. It's 
yeah, it's just going to take a long time. Uh, win some resources. Had a good day. Might be worth a look with the new announcement. Yes, you're right. Uh, win some, lose some, as they say. Um, that uh, I didn't. Let's have a look at the announcement. Um, there wasn't much of an announcement. Uh, but again, you know, it's in the right sector. Um and it does bobble around a bit, so it's got a bit of volatility. The wind sum. Let's have a little look at the chart while we're here. Try and play a bit of catch up with these questions. Um, but um, I think rain is affecting the speed of my internet this afternoon. Um, but yes, no, it doesn't look too bad, does it? Wind sum. I've got to say. Um, but maybe um, you know these lithium stocks still uh, come and go on a daily basis. Good trading stocks. I think you buy them on the weakness and you sell them on the good stuff um mag yes twiggy has bought a big slice um twiggy's not not um not infallible though let's face it um twiggy has made some some serious mistakes the people that were in anaconda nickel will attest to that also uh, that purchase of the uh, nickel business in canada which they beat uh bhp for so um it has been on my watch list and uh it still is have to say it's had a pretty good run as well in the last few months. So not doing too badly there. Magmatic resources, the stock code there, uh, MAG. Let's just uh, get up the last announcement. Um, here we go. Our market cap's only, see, only 44 million bucks. So not a bad little leverage play there. Um, Wellington North, they've got money. Uh, one of the directors has been buying some shares as well. All good stuff uh, in that respect. So um, copper gold. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, copper gold. What can you say? It's pretty hot at the moment. If you held Aurora, what would you sell it on the recent negative news? Well, if you're not a seller, then you're going to have to be patient, I think is the answer, because uh, <laughs> the Sabre Glass um acquisition was a big one was a company maker or a company shaker and at the moment it's turned into a company shaker so uh, i think you're gonna have to be very patient um thoughts on abb it was spruced as a good stop by adam Dawes on your interview i call but yet to fire well yeah dave unfortunately abb has got itself in a bit of a pickle um it did well buying a symbio uh, and then had a go at Superloop, which backfired on it and it ended up having to sell uh, some of its stake in Superloop. Uh, it was never going to get it at that price, and it's suffered ever since. It needs to uh, build some credibility back, but I don't mind the story. Um, but uh, losing that contract uh, to Superloop, so you can kind of understand uh, why uh, they wanted Superloop, um, was a bit of a bummer, to say the least. So um, Dorsey might be um, might have to be a bit patient in that one, as will I. Um, Jürgen asks, uh, AWC, sell now or wait for the takeover completion? Well, um, the takeover completion, it, it's it's a script offer from Alcoa. Um, there's a fair chance it's going to go through. It, it's really, you are, they're not going to change the ratio. <laughs> so you are going to end up with Alcoa shares. Um, and you've got to make a judgment on whether you want Alcoa shares and what you think the aluminium price is going to be. This one has doubled. I'd be taking some money off the table. Um, I don't know if you want to sell all of them, but there's not going to be a competing offer. They're not going to increase the offer. It is a function of Alcoa. That is it. Thoughts on capital health. Um, CAJ is the code there. Let's have a little look. I haven't had a lot of thoughts on capital health, I must admit. Um, it's not one that um, I get very excited about. Um, healthcare provider, uh, diagnostic imaging, x-rays, etc. Yeah, I mean, it's probably a hold, isn't it? Um, if anything, Steve Bailey, questions all over the place from you. I just comment from me, being a subscriber from before your time in the newsletter. Steve, you deserve a medal. Well done, mate. I uh, sold NL and LNAS a couple of weeks back for 50% profit in five months. It's busy drafting an email to ask you about buying SNAS. Um, Red Marks taking didn't bother hitting send. How interesting well my thinking is aligned with years of education. Well done, Steve. Uh, thoughts on chalice? Well, it's the poison chalice. It's not um it's not been a really good 
uh, has it for Chalice shareholders. And, you know, it flew high, um, so high. You know, let's face it, Gonneville uh, was um, just extraordinary. Um, I guess, you know, in all this froth and bubble that we're seeing around copper and gold stocks, maybe uh, we'll get a little bit of uh, more interest in Chalice. But, um, you know, it did kind of, it did kind of use up a lot of goodwill. Four hundred and seventy million dollar market cap. Um, just trying to see what the last, um, what the uh, the last uh, news was out of them. We have had um, substantial shareholder notice lodged. Um, change of substantial shareholder. Goldman Sachs has been selling some. They've gone down from twenty nine and a half to twenty five million. There's a big short in this one as well. Uh, so that certainly um, doesn't uh, doesn't really help matters because they don't really want to live it, let it go. But um, you'd have to think it's got a chance. It did present recently. It didn't do much to the share price. I certainly wouldn't be chucking it out at these kind of prices. I'm going to have to move on quite quickly because we've got 15 minutes on left and I've got 46 new messages. So I apologize if I miss some of your stocks. 29 Metal, a bit of a chat about the mine closing, but seems to be picking up. Your thoughts? Um, thoughts are that it's a copper stock, even if it's got problems because of the weather and tailings dams up at um, Capricorn, but it's still a copper stock. And the market likes copper stocks, and the market has been buying this one. So um, the market generally likes this one, but it's going to take a while to get that production back up to where it was. In the meantime... It suffers from this same problem that we've got across the board at the moment without the likes of Oz Minerals and no significant big pure copper plays because copper usually comes with gold. This gets in demand. You want to punt copper in Australia? 29 medals. Also got Owen Hegarty behind it as well. Um, so that's interesting too. Um, let's just move on as quickly as we can. See you, Jimmy's. See you, Six. Uh, which, uh, let's get the right stock code in. Uh, which is Clarity Pharmaceuticals, been doing okay, uh, hasn't it, Clarity? Uh, CU6 is the last announcement from this one. Let's just have a quick look. My internet's very slow this afternoon. It must be all the rain. Um, come on, baby. You can do it. You can do it. Um, they've just entered recently into a clinical supply agreement um which is good with north star late stage therapy trials so it all looks as if it's heading in the right direction um last scale manufacturing of therapeutic isotopes um yeah i don't know the technology behind it but it's obviously been doing okay um so it's probably a hold at these kind of levels obviously high risk especially if the market does fall over uh don't know anything about Dur duratech i'm afraid dur let's just have a look at the chart quickly um dur duratech um yeah it has been in a bit of a sentiment hole hasn't it to say the least um i don't even know what they do let's have a little look they don't make batteries do they that's for sure um duratech uh they are god it's slow um we have seen duratech uh Provision of assessment, protection, remediation, refurbishment of service to a range of assets. Oh, that's right. Steel and concrete. Yeah, no, not. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll get back up there. The volume's kind of um, been quite heavy on the way down. I'd probably be holding it. Uh, Sigma. <coughs> Linda asks about Sigma Healthcare. Is it worth getting in band backdoor exposure to Chemist Warehouse? That is assuming the government approves the deal. Yes, I guess it is assuming. Um, interestingly, uh, HMC Capital, uh, which was one of the big backers of Sigma, or big backers of Chemist Warehouse and the, and the architects of this deal, uh, did sell some. So that, I think that's telling you something. Uh, it probably got a little bit um, over ambitious in terms of the share price. Maybe it needs to come back a little more. We're still yet to get approvals. That could take some time, but certainly the margins at Chemist Warehouse uh, were pretty impressive. So it's a good business. It's got good management. It does what it does well. You can see it. It's in the high street. You can go in and you can touch it and you can feel it, which is great. Um, but I think it got a little bit carried away. So, um, yep, uh, maybe the uh, HMC guy was uh, right to take profits. But uh, if it got back to uh, maybe a dollar ten, you probably look to uh, 
maybe start to accumulate that one. Um, oh, have I run out of questions? This looks good. I can go back. Um, mineral resources, potential of a $1 billion sale of 49% of their Onslow Iron ore row, plus have applied to build $850 million gas plant, lots of near-term catalysts. Yep, there are. Biggest near-term catalyst would be um, iron ore prices increasing or lithium prices increasing. It's had a pretty good uh, bounce, uh, considering when you look at something like Fortescue, which hasn't bounced, or even BHP, which hasn't bounced. Um, I would be taking a little bit of pro If you've been holding mineral resources for a little while, I would be just taking a few profits in it it's done pretty well look at the chart there we go it's, it's rallied from 54 bucks to 70 bucks not bad i'd be taking a few profits in that one ad bry would you wait for the takeover offer to complete always fun and games in takeover offers isn't it uh, the um, the general rule of thumb if you want the rule of thumb um now my mouse has stopped working uh, if you want the rule of thumb for um, takeovers is that usually you sell some on uh, the first bid um, and then you wait to see what happens. Then you can sit back and kind of wait and see what happens. Now, these guys have entered into a scheme of arrangement um, and I think the price from memory um, is uh, $3.20. They're three dollars fourteen. If you really need that six cents, good movie by the way. I won't spoil the ending, Bruce Willis. Uh, but if you really need that six cents, hang on. If you can't be bothered to get that six cents, and let's face it, anything can happen and probably will, um, then I'd take the money. To be quite honest, <laughs> I'd bank it, and move on, get into something else. But if you really want the six cents, knock yourself out. Um, it's not enough to get out of bed for, as famously supermodels would say. City chic, what do you think of it? Nah, nah, not interested at all in city chic. If you want to buy retailers, buy good ones. Um, city chic doesn't really fall into that category at the moment. Um, it has had some problems. Uh, BOT on track to get a FDA approval in June 24 for one of their drugs. Well, that will be a pretty big catalyst um i don't know much about bot but obviously um these milestones that we see in drug companies in fact milestones that we see in uh, resource companies and i spoke to um greg hall today from uh, alligator energy i had a bit of a snappy conversation with him he didn't cry any crocodile tears but i did talk to him about the timeline and you can see with mining companies there is a timeline uh, in terms of um you know doing pf S is a preliminary feasibility study, definitive feasibility study, funding, offtake agreements. Same thing happens with biotechs. There is a timeline. And every time they pass a milestone, they get re-rated. They get de-risked. So if it does get approval in June 24, not too far away, um, then, um, yeah, they should get re-weighted. Alan Wu asks again, Alan, T-W-E, uh, yes uh share price reaction is disappointing well <coughs> it isn't it isn't i don't know what you were really expecting alan because it has been in the pipeline for some time and it's just a question of when these guys can't switch on the distribution channel like a, a light switch you can't just say okay we're going to ship all this stuff to china because they've they've created alternate distribution channels for their product i liked twe it was my big cap stock for the advent calendar for Ausbiz. I only had I had to pick one. I picked Zip, but TWE, as I wrote at the time in the newsletter, was my big cap stock. The reason being that they had just done that big acquisition in the US for the Dow Vineyards. They'd raised money at ten dollars eighty, and that indigestion was weighing. I'm not sure the indigestion has passed through completely, and that whether the Dow Vineyards is going to be a success. Twenty nine crimes uh, needs to kick again. Uh, Snoop Dogg needs to pull his finger out as far as the red wine business goes. But the stock has rallied from $10.80 to $12.86. Now, part of that is the presumption that the Chinese tariffs will be wound back. That has happened. Buy the rumour, sell the fact. They haven't actually sold off much on the back of it, so we'll wait and see. 
But uh, TWE, I think most brokers have got valuations in excess of 14 bucks. Still like it. I'd be holding it up here. No reason to sell it. Uh, there we go. Jim's asked the same question. Um, uh, ALU, uh, Peter asked if I added it to the Harry Kane portfolio, same as Abrise, 5% is the offer price worth it. Well, 5% is always worth it. And to some extent, uh, Harry Kane stocks and, and takeover arbitrage is a great way to play the market to get some nice little um, runs on the board, bat and pad. I know we're mixing sports here, bat and pad. But when the market's in a defensive downward kind of spiral, these sorts of um, these sorts of 5% are nice and easy to, to take. So that's part of the reason why um, Altium, let's have a little look at Altium, um, you know, it does offer a 5% and six, six cents, I guess, on $3.14 um, is, is maybe worth it. Um, you know, that's not 5%, though. That's 1.9%. I don't think 1.9% is worth getting out of bed for. 5% you might want to get out of bed for. And if the market does tip over uh, the Harry Kane portfolio, those sorts of arbitrage stocks do come into play because they are more defensive uh, as opposed to taking risk. But if risk is on and you want to use the money elsewhere, then you may be able to make more than 5%. Um, Jürgen asks, Ax, it's been up over two bucks. Will it ever get there again or just good income for the execs? I've met uh, Mohammed Shakir. Uh, I've been to the lab. I've seen it. Uh, it is real. Axe, uh, Archer Materials. This is quantum computing. If you ever thought this was going to be an overnight success story, um, you obviously weren't reading the newsletter. I did tip this one as um, a stock to um, to watch and to buy. I tipped it at 75 cents. It went to, um, wait, it went bananas at one stage. Uh, I think it was from memory. I mean, I know that there's a, there's a huge amount of people um piled in i'm not sure why um it got to three bucks and then i said sell well here we are at 52 cents it's going to take a long time i don't think the execs are in it for the income certainly my uh, reading of muhammad is that he was uh, very much in it for the long haul he was going to build the thing he was going to build a quantum chip he was going to make sure he had the all the ip in place and then watch them beat a path to his door uh, so there we go. That hasn't changed. Share price does, though. Um, I don't know what else to say um, on that one. Alan. Oh, it's good to get lots of questions from you today. You were, are very positive on um, Neuron Pharmaceutical. Well, I was very positive. We did a on the couch with it. And the guy basically told us to the day, to the hour, to the minute when it was going to have a massive uplift. And voila, it did. Uh, and it subsequently had a massive uplift. And of course, it has been attacked. Well, it's not a uh, neuron that's been attacked for Arcadia, which is its partner in the US, which sells Debu, which is their drug for Rett syndrome. They've got another one in the pipeline. Um, if that's successful, then uh, that will um, kick them again. We need to see some more sales numbers. We need to get uh, that um, short selling report well and truly in the background. We need to get through that. Uh, so that's very important for um, market uh, trust. At the moment, it's um, probably just going to go sideways, I guess. But there are there is pregnant with news. Uh, BTH dodged to take over a bid, and the share price tanked. What direction do you think it will go? Um, <laughs> BTH, which is big tin can, had a very good COVID in terms of share price. It's had a very rubbish time since. It was all the go uh, during COVID because it was supposedly uh, talked about in glowing terms on the call. I know some of my uh, colleagues on the call talked about it as the Australian version of Salesforce. Well, that doesn't seem to have panned out, does it? So um, I, I think it's, um, you know, maybe someone will put it out of its mercy at some stage, Rod. Let's hope so. Um, but anyway, we'll see. Uh, Linda, since talking about biotech mesoblast, finally received some good news. Is it time to reconsider mesoblast prospects? Yeah. Mesoblast. Mesoblast has been doing this for so long. It has raised so much money. Finally, some good news. Well, once the good news comes, it's still got to get sales. Um, you know, it's one thing getting good news, but you still got to get sales. Um, it does bobble around like there's no tomorrow. You, you've got to have a strong stomach for this one. Um, I don't know if it's time to reconsider Mesoblast prospects. It's going to be continue to be volatile. 
if it does get FDA approval, obviously there are some shorts in this one. Um, I don't know how many off the top of my head. Let's have a little look. But there are some shorts in Miso. It is traded in the US as well. Now they can get very excited about things. Um, so there's that too. It's only got 2.4% uh, shorted. One stage uh, to the tail end of last year, it was around 8%. Um, so there's been a lot of short covering, which probably explains why the share price has gone from 40 cents to 85 cents. Um, FDA approval would be great. Sales would be even better, uh, I have to say. Last one this evening. My wife actually is sitting next to me. Say hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. Hello, Jane. My wife is sitting next to me. We have a dinner engagement. Um, hello, Perth. Hello, Perth. It's not Perth. Um, I must admit, I have never heard of EIQ. Um, so I'm going to defer on that one. I might have a little look at that over the weekend if I've got nothing better to do and it's continuing to rain like there's no tomorrow. Steve Bailey says, hi, Jane, by the way. Um, EIQ. Uh, let's uh in artificial intelligence diagnostics tools to enhance the diagnosis of structural heart disease sounds fantastic um yeah sounds great um sorry don't know much about that one um dxb diametrics uh i like that one uh good to see directors buying thanks for that steve uh let's get the chart up on that one uh has drifted off i have to say on that but um yeah maybe the 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 people that puff that one have walked off for the time being um but dmx 200 um yeah i don't mind diametric still anyway um dyl applied for the spp well done dave uh well the spp in uh deep yellow is a dollar 22 and a half now, last I looked at Deep Yellow, <coughs> that stock price is $1.39, if I'm not mistaken. Now, $1.22.5 minus $1.39 gives you about 16.5 cents profit if you sold some of the ones you have. So don't seem to think there's much of a problem with that at the moment, Dave. The SPP closes Monday afternoon at 5 o'clock. The uh, uranium price isn't going south. Um Stocks are, but then the stocks went up yesterday. They are, they do bounce around. If you uh, couldn't take a joke, you shouldn't have joined. Um, certainly volatility in uranium stocks continues. It will continue. Have have a listen maybe to the uh, podcast I did today. Um, that's about it. Thanks, Alan. Um, hopefully people got something out of this. I will uh, sign off now. Uh, it's been fun as always hope people did get something out of this it is general advice um, it is uh, as usual uh, worthwhile consulting a financial advisor I am always here for uh, members uh, if they want to email me <coughs> I'm always here henry at marcustoday.com.au looking forward to our members meet up in Perth it's going to be a lot of fun Jane's coming so she'll entertain you if nothing else um, and uh, hopefully uh, everybody will um, enjoy that session. Hopefully everyone's enjoyed this session. Signing off for now and uh, have a great uh, weekend.